everyone, it's Kate from The Fold Line. I'm back this week with our Sewing Bee update. Um, for those of you who are new to this, um, we hunt out patterns that were featured in the show. And if you haven't seen last night's episode, don't watch this. Go and watch it and then come back to it because we've got spoilers. Um, so this week was upcycling week. The theme was using old um, clothing and fabric to make new fab new things. So the first challenge was a waistcoat challenge and they had loads of, um, it was fantastic, they had loads of old suits and jeans and loads of things to pick from and they could, um, and it was quite an involved make this waistcoat. I don't know if anyone else thought that when I saw all the pieces coming together. So we've got the perfect pattern that this one is, I mean, literally spot on. Um, it's the men's Belvedere waistcoat from Thread Theory. There's two variations with this, so you can either make it very similar to the one that we saw last night. Um, five pockets, five, sorry, five pockets, five buttons down the front, um, the back's fully lined, the same as the show, and or you can pick with this variation, they've got little like jet pockets that you can add in, which are really nice feature. This one, I mean, is, I mean, yeah, it really couldn't be any closer. Uh, I thought this was kind of perfect and once I'd seen that I was like, I'm not going to look for other ones because this one is spot on. And it, it's, for those of you who haven't come across Thread Theory before, they um, specialise in men's sewing patterns so they're really fantastic if you're looking for some, if you want to make something for men, make men's wear patterns. So the next challenge which we don't hunt out the patterns for because what they make is so bananas is the upcycling challenge and this one was using um, army camo sort of leftover camo to make things so there was it was a really good challenge and actually I thought what they made this time as the weeks go on what they're making is becoming more and more wearable because sometimes what they make is quite crazy so the final challenge was um the theme well usually they have a, a kind of a garment theme but this week, because it's upcycling, they were using denim was the theme. So they were using denim to create dresses. Really interesting, you know, what they did. And I'll talk through them as we kind of go through. So let me start at the top. So the first person I'm going to talk to you about is Fairy's monochrome dress. This was really interesting because, um, let me just pull up the pattern. Sorry, my laptop is here. This was really interesting because it had a, um, it's, it was like a pencil dress. It had a panel kind of going down the center front and a zip that went from the cent, kind of off center all the way down to the bottom. And it meant that the, the, the kind of flap then sort of kind of flap back over on itself. I was really chuffed with this because I know this is the right pattern. I caught a little glimpse of it a very grainy number and I managed to work out what it was. It is the Vogue 1593. So what Fairy did, which was really interesting, if I show you the line drawing of this pattern, you'll understand. So the central panel that you can see kind of kind of either side of the centre front, um, she had these sort of chevrons going down, that's not the word, um, sort of diagonal kind of pieces in black and white monochrome kind of going down the front and it was really striking I thought it was really beautiful so I know that this pattern is right I was really really pleased so next up we have got Serena sorry Let's see I had I had I hadn't got everything in order so so Serena this one I know also is right I caught the glimpse of the cover of the pattern so I managed to work out which one it was Hers was really interesting, so it was a panel dress, so it was quite fitted at the top, it had sleeves and it flared from the waist and it had a seam at the, at, at the waistline as well. What was really nice, so she used panels of denim that were different colours on each panel and it gave a really kind of interesting look and she also caught um, a kind of tab into two seams which kind of buttoned over the front which was like the bottom of, button of a pair of jeans which I thought was a really nice detail. So the pattern that she used was the Vogue 9050. Um, when I show you the line drawing there's loads of variations that you can do with this dress. Um, she definitely tweaked it slightly by 
kind of making the center seam go the whole way across um, the front but I I'm sure this is the right one so it's a, it's got that really interesting thing I like about it is you can see um, the way that the seam line slopes up towards the center up towards the neckline it's quite an interesting kind of shape but yes so I was very chuffed for that next up we had Adina's paisley print dress this one was really hard to look for because it was pieced and I we did quite a lot of research I think this one is pretty close so if you're looking for something similar um, the Vogue 8648 I picked this because um, it had a very similar neckline and a bit kind of quite chunky straps on the on the um, on the sleeves, quite chunky straps. Lots of seams on this one. It's really hard to tell what seams um, Adina had on hers because it was all she used loads of denim and almost made a patchwork of it, and then and then that's what kind of formed the dress. So it was hard to know, but I think that one is quite similar in shape. Um, next up we have got Raf's um, ocean dress which was absolutely incredible. So he created a sort of ocean scene of waves using, and it sounds naff but it, when I'm describing it, but it wasn't at all, it was really beautiful, um, using different denims, so different colours denims to create the feel of the waves. It was just really cleverly done and it's quite a simple shape. I did struggle actually with this because it's a sort of halter neck um, and then it was quite it was quite loose fitting. I think to be honest everything was about the sort of, um, not even print, but the kind of texture that he created on the front of the dress. So the pattern that we've got is the Simplicity 8594. I felt this was quite similar, it had that sort of halter neck feel. This has got definitely, it's definitely more fitted, it's got princess seams, but I think you get the sort, if you wanted it to, a bit more boxy like his, you could size up. Um, so I think that kind of works as a sort of stock gate. But if anyone's got any suggestions, please put a comment down below because I'm sure I've missed something. Um, I know that he does draft quite a lot of his own things, so I feel like that's probably what he did with this one. Next up, we've got Damien's um, family fabric denim dress. This was quite sweet, actually. He used um, his old pairs of jeans that he used out in his workshop um, to paint in, to fix his motorbike with. So it was really, it felt really nice because he was actually using his own, his own kind of clothes. Um, I am 99% sure this is right. I managed to catch a slight glimpse and work out roughly I knew it was a Simplicity dress and then I looked through and I think this is it. So it's a Simplicity 8594, um, Damien's dress. So it was v-necked, princess seamed, panelled skirt and pan um, seam at the waist and this dress has all of those features. So I will show you, it's actually a really lovely shape if you're looking for something for summer. This. I think is a really good one. So again, princess seams, he's added a seam down the centre front um, of the, just the, um, what's the, like the front panel of the dress. Um, and I think that was to get like all the fabrication that he wanted in there. Uh, it then flares out from the waist. I think it's just a really lovely shape. So you can see from the picture, um, it's a good one. So. I was really pleased with that one, so I think that one is spot on. Next we have got Rebecca's patchwork dress. So hers was really interesting and I thought it was really nice because she started talking about it and her mother and her grandmother do a lot of patchworking and so that's what inspired this dress. So it was a fairly fitted shift, kind of fitted shift dress with straps at the kind of strappy sleeves and it had this panel down the front of the dress that had this sort of um, herringbone shape um, of patchwork materials and it was really beautifully done, it was kind of very crisp and clean and perfect. Um, the pattern that I found that I thought would work well is the McCall's 8034. So I'll just show you the line drawing so you get an idea because the kind of cover drawing looks quite different because it's got these big sleeves. So there's a strappy dress 
This one, um, the McCall's one has a seam right underneath the bust, which is different from hers, but it has a very similar feel and you've definitely got those seams down the front and you wanted to create that sort of panel. Um, yeah, I'd love to know what actually she used because that one definitely, I thought I would be able to find it, but I did struggle. But I think this one is a really good option if you're looking for something kind of fitted like that. Right, the last one I was completely, it foxed me. So I, Rachel and I spent quite a long time looking and we just couldn't find anything similar. So Andrew's Pythagoras Theorem dress. So his was really clever. He used panels of denim and again had a herringbone, but the herringbone sort of met at the waistline. So the panels kind of came diagonally down and then they met its sort of brother and then kind of went off. So it was really striking and the different coloured denims that he used was really interesting. I just couldn't find anything similar. The top was zigzagged where the denim ended, the straps as well. I just, I, f I absolutely failed. So if anyone saw that last night and thought, oh, I know a similar dress to that, let us know because that was the one we really struggled on. So I hope that was good and you enjoyed that. We'll be back soon next week with our next update and we'll be here soon with another video. Have a lovely weekend. Bye. Actually, it's not the weekend, is it? It's the middle of the week. Have a good week. <laughs> Bye.